Hey guys, this is Jason with Glitch in the System. Today I'm going to continue on the series of uh, how to test a vending machine app. Uh, the first part here that we're going to work on is how to write test cases. So purpose of test cases. So I'm going to, before I even start, I'm going to briefly go over uh, what test cases are, why you need them, all those sorts of things and kind of go into it before we start writing the test cases. This is kind of like meant for like an uh, introductory lesson for somebody who may not be super skilled in doing this or somebody who wants to get into QA or uh, just kind of good background information for you um, even if you do know the facts. So uh, let's go. So uh, purpose of test cases. So number one, make sure the feature is working as expected. So uh, if the requirement is that the feature should do um, something, then that's what you're testing. So for example, if you're testing a login form, when somebody puts a correct username, a correct password, and they hit the login button, it should take them to some page, it should log them in, and uh, all that sort of thing. So uh, that's the primary purpose of the test case, um, is, is to have that. Uh, number two is to document the functionality from a user point of view. So. Uh, there is some requirements documents out there that were not written by you. It was written by somebody in the business or somebody on your team uh, of what the feature, the app, the website, the whatever you're testing should do. Uh, but usually those are at more of a different level than what the test case is going to be. So they're going to be at a higher level um, typically, and they're just going to say uh, when a when a user tries to log in, they're going to hit the landing page. So that that may be okay for a test case but um, a lot of times uh, testing when you're writing your test case you're gonna be more uh, granular you're gonna be more detailed of what you want to include in there and uh, how it should behave because the person that wrote the requirements are not gonna think about all the different scenarios of what could happen uh, in that transaction uh, but between the developers and the QA's uh, we are expected to develop and test that every possible thing can happen uh, in the correct way because if you don't properly build a login form then you're you have potential for being hacked or um, you have potential for people not being able to log in correctly and uh, all sorts of things all right number three document the history of when that functionality is working so uh, you've written your test case so you know what it's supposed to do uh, you've tested it you've made sure that uh, it does what you says it's supposed to do and then the third part is that uh, typically test cases generate some sort of reporting um, so you'll have a history of uh, say on December 21st uh, this test case ran and it passed and then on December 29th uh, we ran the same test case it no longer passes so at that point uh, QA would go in write a bug and the, work with the developers and try to figure out what's going on that change so uh, if nothing application wide uh, wise changed then uh, obviously maybe there's something uh, infrastructure wise or maybe uh, they're using AWS and something on AWS changed um, so something obviously changed because things don't just go from working to not working without anything ever changing so if a, a developer ever tells you that um, oh I didn't change anything well it worked yesterday but it doesn't work today I use my exact same uh, set up exact same data and it's not working um, so something definitely changed so it might not have been something you did it may be something the person next to you did that uh, affected what you did or maybe something that's totally out of your control like uh, the infrastructure maybe uh, the network went down on something who knows uh, there's so many possibilities so um, let's just kind of go with that all right, and then uh, number four, we've already kind of talked about this. It helps to expose bugs in the software. So uh, you're not just testing to make sure that things work, but you're trying to test to make sure that things don't break when you're doing weird things. Um, and when I say weird things, it's like, um, obviously if, if I put a wrong username or password in, uh, that's not gonna work. But uh, when users are doing things, um, they don't typically do the things that uh, 
in the way that it was designed to do. Um, but as a team of developers, uh, designers, QA, we have to be able to predict uh, how a user might interact with the app because uh, they might have a field that says enter a number and they try to put a letter in there and we should either block that letter or we should um, let them know that you can only put numbers in there. Um, I would go with the first one where it says you just don't let them enter a letter because just don't let them do the bad thing in the first place. Uh, but if they were able to enter a letter, hit submit, and then it actually made it to the database somehow, uh, then we have a huge problem because we have bad data um, and we have a uh, situation where uh, if somebody tried to use that data in the application, the application is probably going to blow up because if you tried to do like uh, one plus one, th that's supposed to give you two. But if you try to do one plus a, that's not going to give you two. So things are not going to work the way they're supposed to. So that's kind of like the other purpose of uh, test cases. So um, we hope that there's no bugs, but there's always going to be bugs um, because we're not perfect. We're just humans writing code and testing stuff. All right, so let's talk about the structure of a test case. So here are like the common things that are included in test cases. Number one, you need to tell what the test is about. So this is the title. So uh, should log in to a, should log in. That might be a good title, right? Um, or uh, I'm able, or I wouldn't use I'm, so uh, able to add item to cart, able to delete item from cart, all right? Um, probably wouldn't use the word able, just say add item to cart or successfully add item to cart or get error when so, such and such happens. Uh, what I recommend not using for titles is, uh, I see this a lot in more junior QAs, is like using the word verify that uh, user can log in. Okay, it's like we know you're gonna verify something, so you don't really need to write it there. And then also the other problem is that they put verify that in front of every single test case that they write. So there's like 300 test cases that say verify that. So it's kind of hard to find stuff and it's hard to read and it's, it's, it's just not great. So don't ever start with uh, verify that. Just say what the test is about um, as clear and as concise as possible. All right, so you will need to tell how to execute the test. So these are the steps. Probably the most important part of the test case, um, actually one of the most important parts. Uh, so you have to say user enters a valid username, user enters valid email, user clicks the submit button, and then something happens, right? So you need to give as detailed of steps as you can, uh, but be careful of giving too much detail. So I typically don't include uh, specific data in my test case. Uh, so I won't say log in with uh, Joe at uh, joescrabshack.com and with password blah, blah, blah. Because if for whatever reason that user doesn't exist in another environment or that user's password changes, then we have to go in and update every single test case that uh, that uses that data. So I recommend uh, keeping your data separately uh, and you just kind of have to know that this scenario will use this data and and so forth and so on. Um, it'll be easier to kind of, well, it's, when you get to automation of the test case, that'll uh, be the same situation, right? I don't put my username and password in the code of what I'm testing, I put it in a separate file so that way if anything changes then I can just uh, update the file and it updates everywhere. So, all right, so next thing, and you need to tell what the expect, what you are expecting the test to have accomplished. So what is the expected outcome? So when I enter that username, password and hit the submit button, what am I expecting to happen? So uh, first thing you put in there is the acceptance criteria is that says a uh, user is logged in to the home page right uh, but then you'll add any other details that you might need like a, like a, a home page displays a users name at the top uh, not specifically about this test case right but it gives you a hint that you were successfully logged in because 
uh, based on your username and password, it took you to the home page, but it's not just a home page, it's your home page because it you can see your name there. So uh, try to keep your tests as specific as possible. So we are only trying to test one thing. So I'm trying to test the login. Um, so whatever I need in order to comfortably say that I have tested the login functionality, I'm going to add that to my expected results uh, for testing. Anything else, like uh, any of the other buttons or switches or whatever on the home page, I don't necessarily want to test those because then I have way too, much, too many things and I'm testing too many things. And when you fail the test case, if you have 50 things that you're saying that you're expecting these things to all be there, it's kind of hard to know which one of those 50 things is failing, right? And those 50 things are not probably included in your title, so uh, it makes it very difficult to kind of narrow down what's going on. And another thing is that if you have 50 things and three of those things have bugs on them, and then uh, you go, then one bug gets fixed and you still have two bugs on them, it's going to look confusing to people looking at your test because, wait a minute, we fixed the bug that was associated to that test cases, then you're just going to be like, no, 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 there are actually two more bugs associated to that test case. And then everybody's going to be scratching their head. It's like, then why don't you have separate test cases for those things? So that way we know that uh, this thing is related to that, this thing is related to that, and this thing is related to that. So uh, we'll have clear reporting of what's going on. So uh, very important. Okay. so. After structure, there are a couple different forms of writing test cases. There are pretty much two main forms. Um, there's the traditional, and then there's the BDD style, which is stands for Behavior Driven Development. So traditional, you're gonna have a title, you're gonna have execution steps, and you're gonna have expected results. So the traditional is gonna be more flexible, I guess, on what you add. Uh, there's not really a format. Um, so these are the things that any test case management system out there that you're going to be using is going to have those three things and they're probably all going to be required. They should all be required um, by default and usually you can't get around those things because uh, you have to have a title description or you have to have a title, the steps, and the expected results. All right. A um, few other things that you can add are description. So if you wanted to add some more context to your title, um, so because things can get long, right? Um, so we can have like some test and then it's, you don't want to make a super, you don't want to make a paragraph out of your test, right? So if you need to make a paragraph, throw it in the description. All right, preconditions. So things that you need to have in order for you to be able to run that test. So you don't need to do too much detail in here, like silly things like, oh, I need to have an internet connection. I need to have a computer. I need to um, have a mouse, right? Uh, those, no. So things might be like, uh, this account needs to be in this particular state in order for you to run this test case. So that would be appropriate for uh, preconditions. All right, attachments of data to you. So um, you can do an attachment or you can do a link to a file share somewhere, um, which I would probably recommend uh, because then that way if you're, you can just link link it to several different test cases and you can just change it in one place instead of uh, re-uploading attachments. And uh, But attachments might be good for something like a screenshot so you can like put a mock-up of the page and then put circles and annotations on it and say that uh, this is kind of how things are supposed to look or behave. Uh, just if things are more complicated, add, add some attachments if you need to. All right, the second one is BDD. So this is gonna be more of a structured one where you have to write it in given when then okay so given is the context or the purpose of the test so it's basically the title okay so it's what you're testing all right and then when is what happens so the actions that you take so this is the title given is the title when is the actions and then then you guessed it it's the expected results. So given a user logs in, when I enter a username and I enter a password and I click the submit button, then the user should be logged in, the user should see their name on the home page, right? 
So I think you've heard me say and. So you have to do given when then, but you can put an and in between these. So given something and something, or when something and something, and, and then something and something. So to add more, uh, because otherwise just having three lines to be able to write all of your information is going to be pretty difficult. And let me actually skip, move back a slide. I skipped a slide here. So let's go back one. There we go. Okay. So here's a login page. So it's just a simple login page. It says login page and it says username, password, and then those fields are for you to enter your username and password and it has a login button. All right. Pretty simple. That's what we've been talking about. So here's what it would look like in a traditional example. So title, user can log in. So it says who is doing what, right? So it's very, very good practice. Um, execution steps, enter a valid username and password. So you can add them as two different lines or you can just make it as one because it makes sense. As long as it makes sense, that's all that matters. Okay, click the login button. Okay, pretty simple, two steps, right? Enter a valid username and password, click the login button. And expected results, user is logged in. All right, and user is redirected to the home page. So the next example is for BDD. So given a user logs in, so still makes sense, right? So context of who's doing what, when the user enters a valid username and password and clicks the login button, then the user is logged in. So it sounds very similar to the last approach, but it's more structured. So you kind of know what you're getting. Um, so, and the user sees the home page. All right. So that, All right, so that's basically it. So uh, that's how to write a, a test case uh, using those two styles. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and just let's ignore all of these uh, kind of uh, structural things. And let's, let's go ahead and just test something. So uh, in, our, in my uh, previous call with uh, a manager, I was given this uh, exercise to do a test of a vending machine. So the test of the vending machine was just basically, um, you have a vending machine, it takes denominations of uh, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, uh, and so forth and so on. And then uh, it vends out uh, one of four sodas. So in this case, I'm, I'm taking a picture of uh, a vending machine and it does stuff. It has a little uh, display that you can uh, send messages to the user. And basically he said, give me all the test cases that you can think of for a vending machine. So uh, let's just kind of spout them off because typically how you, this is going to work is um, sometimes the manager will ask you to write it down and send it back to them. Uh, which is kind of the case that I had, but most of the time you're going to do this in on on a screening call, or you're going to do this in front of people in the meeting. So you're going to have to be able to think using uh, whatever knowledge you know of vending machines, because they'll typically give you something that you're familiar with, so that way you can easily come up with stuff. So uh, I'm going to take a minute here. So let's let's pause for 30 se or 10 seconds. And if you want to pause and if you want to write down all the test cases that you can think of for a vending machine, go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so if you did that, great. If you didn't, that's fine. Let's just go over it. So I'm going to start spouting off all the tests uh, I can think of uh, for this vending machine um, for about Let's see, 30 seconds. Already start. Okay, so vending machine, it's going to have some basic things. Um, it's going to be able to, a uh, user enters, uh, uh, user puts in enough money, the exact change. So user puts in exact change for the item that they want. The user presses the button for the item they want. And the result is that the user will get the item dispensed to them. All right, and no change will be returned. All right, second test. So user enters more money than the item costs. The user presses the button for the item, item dispenses, the little message readout uh, says that uh, change due of X number of pennies or dollars, and then uh, 
the machine dispenses the change. All right, so test number three, user enters not enough money for the item. User presses the button for the item. The readout should display that not enough money is uh, entered. They can also display that um, this is how much more money that they need to enter uh, and no money is dispensed and no item is dispensed, okay? So let's see, we're on number four. Number four is uh, user enters money but then hits the cancel button. So I'm assuming there's a cancel button here. The cancel button will dispense the correct amount of money back to the user. <coughs> All right, and number five, I'll just do one more. So user, let's see, user enters uh, correct money for item, but the item that he, he presses the button for is, uh, all empty so you can see that there's empty spots here so it's out of uh, items so the display should show a message saying that it's out of items and then possible things that might happen uh, since I don't know this vending machine in particular uh, number one it'll automatically just give you back your money or number two it'll display a message that says please pick another item and then it'll go through the process of uh, vending the item giving any change necessary and so forth and so on Okay, so those are just like five items that I quickly rattled off. Uh, I could probably keep on going for another like five or 10 minutes doing the same, but um, that is basically the expectation of, of that exercise. And sometimes they'll make you s rattle off stuff for uh, in, until you, you can't talk anymore. Um, I've had that happens where I'm like up there rattling things off for like 10, 15 minutes and I'm just like, uh, I don't know what else to do, but um, they're trying to see what types of things that you'll test. So in there I had like positive scenarios where it was just like, yay, items there, everything works. I had a negative scenario where like, oh, I didn't edit, at, put enough money or I didn't, uh, the item was not there and, uh, and so forth and so on. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what they're looking for. It's a good thing to practice. So try to practice um, on random things. So login pages are good. Uh, vending machine is very common. Um, let's see, a checkout page. So Amazon checkout page. So select an item, add it to your cart, go through the process of checking out. Um, these are things that you've all probably done before. I, I, I totally know that you've done this before. So just think of all the possible things that you've ever done that's ever happened to you, all the positive things that's happened, all the negative scenarios that you can think that's happening. And um, that's basically it. So a uh, good thing to practice. Uh, it's typically for a QA interview, it's always going to come up um, in s no matter what stage of QA you are in. Um, it's always going to come up because I'm still getting those questions. And I'm and sometimes I'm just like, really, guys, I, I, I'm confident that I know how to test stuff. Um, I've been doing it for like 15 years, but um, it always comes up anyway. So, yep, practice. Write it down. Tell your friends all the scenarios and uh, kind of go on. All right, so that's it. Uh, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button at the bottom and uh, I'll make some more. And uh, that's, that's about it. All right, until next time.